Okay, welcome back. In front of me, I've got the flywheel clutch and clutch cover from a International 300 utility tractor. Uh, I've been slowly working on converting this to electric. And if I want to connect this to a electric motor, I need some way to attach the motor to this. And let's just say that I don't want all of this. This is about 80 pounds uh, worth of equipment here. But to be able to connect the electric motor to the input shaft on the tractor, which looks approximately like this, what I need is the splined piece from the clutch and from the clutch cover. And both of those are really just held in by uh, rivets. So I'm thinking if I grind off those rivets, I can save that center piece throw everything else away and then make an adapter that will connect the electric motor using maybe something like a Lovejoy coupler. we go. Okay, a little bit of time has passed since our last shot. Uh, this middle bit here was very challenging to get out. Um, I figured all I had to do was grind the heads off these rivets here, um, but it was a little more challenging than that. Uh, what I ended up doing after some goofing around on the back here and everything, uh, frankly, was just hitting this really, really hard with a sledgehammer uh, out in the grass. You can actually see a little bit of a ding here from the sledgehammer, but there was nothing holding it in except the friction from those pins there. Uh, so that's what it really needed was just a good whack from the back. And then with that out, so this is for the PTO, this is for the wheels and the tractor. Um, basically go together something about like that to make a solid coupler with the uh, probably with a Lovejoy or something. And I do have the clutch alignment tool. And there should be a little bit of space in there. And then... And then in theory, it's basically just like that. Okay, I think I am going to grind out these rivets to get just that center bit out from the clutch. Okay, so I got all the rivets and everything ground off, but it's also been my experience that uh, it's still pretty much impossible to drive out those pins, and what is required now is some brute force. We can try this hammer, but I bet we have to go to the big one right away anyways. Let's give it a whack, see what happens. Now I should be able to drive out what's left of these rivets here. So this is what will drive the wheels 
of the tractor. So here's the input shaft of our transmission. First I'm going to put on this part which came from the uh, the clutch cover uh, which was bolted directly to the flywheel. So this moves anytime the engine was spinning. Uh, so that's for the power takeoff. And then in front of that, this is the center of the clutch. So those two parts could spin independent of each other, but in this case we're going to couple them together just to make things a whole lot simpler mechanically. And if I slide this all the way back, it doesn't even hit here uh, because of uh, that step, the difference in diameter between the two of these. But I don't want this back all the way because I don't want to rub it on here. So I'll put it all the way on, pull it back just a hair. This can go all the way on. Then we've got our Lovejoy coupler. That can go on here. Notice it doesn't go all the way on because, again, it's hitting where we've got that transition from a smaller size to a larger size plus the, the spline. So maybe um, put this on a lathe, take off a bit of material on an angle just to bring the tip of the input shaft up even with the, uh, the jaw coupler here. And then I think the other thing is to take this and bring it forward uh, just right onto each other but we're starting to get off a little bit, so if that's all the way on, but this is milled out a little bit, I think we can have the two of these right on top of each other, just welded together. And then the main thing would be just the distance from here to here, which could be um, half to three quarters of an inch, depending on exactly what we do here. So anyways, that's my thought for now. Um, this would put together those components and be able to transfer energy in from an electric motor. So that's it for now. Next time, we'll have to get on a lathe to make sure that our parts are concentric and properly spaced out. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video and check out the blog at 300mpg.org. And until next time, stay charged up.